streaming at you digitally, but taped live at the Joke Joint Comedy Club in Lilydale, Minnesota, just 15 minutes out of downtown Minneapolis, the stand-up channel presents Uprising, dedicated to bring you the best comedians we can find. And tonight's comics are Corey Adam, Michael O'Keefe, and Ryan Singer. So, ladies and gentlemen, start screaming now for your host, Mr. Chris Maddox! Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. What a night! <laughs> Welcome to Uprising. This is the show. So, uh, yeah, I just went, uh, I, I took a little vacation, but it was, uh, I don't have a job. But uh, I still went somewhere. But it was by myself, and when I came back, my friend said, uh, she asked me, how was your mancation? And uh, that enraged me, because it doesn't, just because I'm a guy, it doesn't, it doesn't sound like vacation. It's a bad pun. There's nothing worse. Somebody told me the other day, well, I was exp instead of explaining, they said mansplaining. That doesn't sound like explaining. Mancation doesn't sound like vacation. Right? I've heard uh, la manscaping for when you shave your back. That sounds like landscaping. That's a good pun. Use that one. Don't use mancation. All right? Makes me angry. I was talking with my brother earlier. My brother used to be my sister. He had a sex change when I was 27, turned into my brother. True story. Um, did so when I was 27. That doesn't do me any good. Um, if you're going to do that, you know, do it when I'm 16 or something. I I could have got away with anything, you know? <laughs> Think about it. Mom, Chris got a tattoo. Lynn got a dick. <laughs> Go, going out, you two have fun. Circumcise that one too, I don't you? <laughs> Change his name and everything, you know? Just like, uh, had to say, you know, after 27 years, I want you to say he, not she. Uh, you know, I'm your brother now, not your sister. I want you to say it as such. You know, the whole thing, I'm not Lynn anymore, I'm Linus, I'm a guy. I'm like, ugh, you know? Not because of the sex change, I don't care, but Linus? Like, dude, <laughs> you're unique in the family, just be Steve. <laughs> and I'm Linus! Okay. But my dad's had a very hard time with that. He's very religious, you know? He, he had to have been praying every night until then. You know, Lord, please let my daughter not be a lesbian anymore. <laughs> right? God said, okay, <laughs> check this shit out. <laughs> there, straight dude, is that better? It's not what I meant. I was like, dad, what's the lesson? What'd you learn? You have to be very specific with your prayers. <laughs> I have jackass friends. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying it's your brother. <laughs> What's it to you? Really, I mean, you know, one of my friends goes, what, does, does he have a penis? I didn't check. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I've never checked. Like, I never thought of this, but you, you can be a guy to me if you want to be, so long as I don't have to check. How about that? <laughs> this is my boyfriend, Tom. Really? Okay. I'll make double sure. <laughs> hey, folks, you are a fantastic audience, and I don't want to keep you any longer. I'm going to start the show. What do you think? Awesome. Keep that applause going, folks. He's a stand-up records recording artist. Ladies and gentlemen, the very funny Corey Adam, everyone. Hello. How you guys doing? You having a good year? Yeah, better than last year? Yeah, last year was probably the worst year of my life. Yeah, let's keep the fun rolling at the comedy show, shall we? Last year I had two good friends die within a week and a half of each other. Oh yeah, shut up. And it was weird, cause like I'm 35 years old and I've never had a close personal friend die before. And I made the mistake of going to my grandpa for sympathy. 
I'm on the phone. I'm like, Grandpa, I'm sad. Some of my friends died. My grandpa said, Corey, I'm 86 years old. All my friends are dead. I said, that's not true. Grandma's still alive. He said, all my friends are dead. Grandpa's a dick. That's essential. When it happened, I had a buddy of mine that was there for me, which was really cool. He took me out right after the first friend died, and we went out to dinner, and I was a miserable mess. I was crying like it was bad. And the waitress comes up to me, and she goes, are you okay? And I said, no, my friend died. She goes, would a free meal help? I said, yes. And then she walked away, and I went, yes. And my buddy looks at me, and he goes, you're disgusting. And I go, I know, but why this time? He goes, you realize you just exploited your friend's death for free shit? Oh, yeah, it was pretty awesome, right? He goes, do you think your friends would want that, you exploiting their death for free stuff? I said, uh, yeah, they were my friends. If you guys have friends who can look at you right in the eye and say, when I die, I don't want you to get any free shit. Guess what? Those aren't friends. Those are enemies. Should probably just kill them for some free shit. Be way easier. Yeah, right? One of my friends that died, his name was Gus, and he was like my best friend in the world, right? And I actually, when he died, I got a tattoo of him right there. You guys see him? Pretty cool, right? Now, my buddy Gus was one of the biggest assholes I've ever known. And he hated two things in this world. Windmills and portrait tattoos. <laughs> died first, doesn't get a choice, all right? I had another friend of mine, like, you ever regret doing that? And I go, no. And he goes, never? And I go, well, sometimes I get home and my roommates aren't around and it's time for a little adult alone time. And I get home, I flip up the laptop, and I set to work and I realize that I have tattooed my friend's face just eye level to watch me masturbate. I have to go to my closet and put on a Christmas sweater just to not feel like a creep. And I mean, let's face it, I'm used to masturbating in front of cats, right? But like, you throw in my dead buddy's ghost and it feels crowded. Not the threesome I've always dreamed about, all right? I have with me Stand Up Records recording artist Corey Adam and satanic beard hair enthusiast. Yeah, I tried. Corey and I have been on the road a lot together. It's true. Do you remember when I taught you to clip your fingernails? I do. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I taught him to clip his fingernails. It looked like he was trying to scratch his way out of a pit. It was amazing. <laughs> he didn't know where to buy them or how much they cost. I'd never, it'd never been practical to my life before. Let me see him now. That's me. <laughs> that is awesome. Uh, what else did we do? Remember that time I stuck that uh, soccer mom sticker on your car oh, and you yeah. didn't notice for three days because you were drunk the whole time? <laughs> I wasn't drunk the whole time. I was hung over the whole time. I was only drunk the one night and I was like, man, hard boiled eggs and gizzards. This will get me through the night. Mm -mm. We, you were puking out your window. Remember the, the A&W? It took us four hours to get from Mil Milwaukee to Chicago because you were puking out the window and you wouldn't let me drive. <laughs> you didn't have a license. What do you want from me? <laughs> You're puking out the window. I, I, I should drive. I am the one that was registered as a legal driver. <laughs> Not if you got caught. Whatever. That was like a really bad thing that happened. Also last year I had an emergency wisdom tooth extraction. Yeah, it's the best, right? You guys ever had tooth stuff? It's awesome, right? I got, home from a, I got home from a show on Christmas Eve and I was flossing my tooth and the bottom part fell off. And all I could do was scream and then fall face first into my filthy, filthy bath mat. It sounded like somebody was big game hunting a dinosaur. Ah! And I'm not a small guy, right? So when I hit the ground, the whole place went a rumbling. My roommate comes over because the door's open. I'm not scared of him spying on me while I floss. And he looks at me and he goes, are you okay? And I looked up from our filthy bath mat and I said, I, I lost my tooth. He said, Corey, if it landed on that bath mat, you let it go. <laughs> but I'm proud. So I grabbed a toenail, jammed it in there and got on with Christmas Eve. Oh yeah, you're grossed out. I live with roommates. I don't even know whose toenail it was. <laughs> Then I had to find 24-hour dental care on Christmas Eve in the Twin Cities. Spoiler alert, doesn't exist. I didn't know what to do, so we went down to the ER. Like, and I'm sitting in the ER waiting to see a doctor, and the lady on my left is holding a sick infant. 
The guy on my right arm is broken and bending the wrong way. They look at me, they're like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, my, my tooth hurts. <laughs> the doctor proceeded to call me first. The lady with the baby booed me. I'm like, shut up. Ah. And I walk in, I sit down, and the doctor comes in. And this is downtown Minneapolis. And this dude is Christmas Eve. He is talking to me like a surfer. This is Minneapolis. Where are you surfing? He comes in. He's like, what's the problem, little dude? He goes, besides Point Break MD? Well, I was flossing and my tooth fell out and it really hurts. And he goes, whoa, I am not a dentist. It's cool. I'm, I'm not a bird. Could you help me? He goes, you're going to need to see a dentist, man. I go, well, are there any of those open? He goes, ha ha, no. And I go, well, could you at least give me some painkillers? He goes, whoa, is that what this is about? And I go, yeah, I have a toenail in my mouth. It's about painkillers. And he wouldn't give me any, which made me angry, right? But he did give me a, an appointment to go see somebody like two days later because they were closed on Christmas. I get to the dentist's office. I sit down, I open my mouth. He takes one look at me and goes, whoa, that's infected. You're going to need to see a doctor. Said I did see a doctor. He wouldn't even give me any painkillers. Dentist goes, is that what this is about? I got so pissed, I stormed out of there. I went to a chiropractor, made him pull the tooth. He's like, I don't usually do this. I'm like, shut up, I already cracked it. That's like all your job, let's go. You got a new album out, don't you? Yeah, I have a new record out. It's called No Joke. And it's uh, all recorded and then we cut out all the jokes so it's all just crowd work. I don't really want to call it like heckling. It's like heckling interaction. It's not even really crowd work. It's just you guys are drunk and shut up. I, I recorded it off all the open mics I went to and what's really cool to me is that like Minneapolis is a pretty big comedy town and there's so many people that have such cool like recording spots like when you did First Ave like that was super cool like like all these different like like Acme and stuff and mine is just like Northeast Palace, Grumpy's downtown. Like I'm in the pits. Yep. I love it. It's great. You got a really good way of uh, promoting it too. Um, oh yeah. By putting it in the, uh, he puts copies of the CD <laughs> in jewel cases that are not his CD. Right. So whenever like, somebody's like, "Oh, can you, I borrow this prong CD?" Yeah. I'm like, "Here you go." You're like, "Dylan, here, take this home." <laughs> yeah, and then they get and open this. it, and it's his CD. Trying to be a better person. I don't know if you can tell. Thank you. Uh, my New Year's resolution was to be a better person, which is funny, because like one of the things I targeted was weight loss. I was gonna lose some weight this year, right? And it's funny, because me resolving to lose weight is just me getting blackout drunk and ordering insanity off the TV. <laughs> you guys know what insanity is? Yeah, it's this hardcore like workout. Here you go, show of hands, how many people here made it through all of the insanity program? Oh, I didn't see that coming, did you assholes? Yeah. I made it through that whole 90-day program, which means this is the body of my dreams. <laughs> and I'm really, really bad at dreaming, I guess. It's funny, I was blackout drunk when I ordered it, so I don't remember it, right? But I do know at least how big of an asshole I am when I'm drunk, so I know exactly what happened. Like, I'm watching TV, these guys are smiling about jumping jacks. I'm at home, lean back, eating Taco Bell off my top belly. I'm like, I could do jumping jacks. These guys aren't special. <laughs> Call up, order it. Like, oh, I want the insanity thing. Like, yeah, we'll get you hooked up. And when I got it, I got a yoga mat. How many people here got it and got a yoga mat? Yeah, it's me. I've done this joke all year, and I'm the only person that got this yoga mat. Which means I was so drunk, they added on a sale. <laughs> like, I want that insanity. Yeah, I want that. Bill, we got a yoga mat sale. Get in here. And I don't remember ordering it, right? I've said that. What I do remember is coming home seven to 10 business days later to a giant box on my steps that just says, insanity. <laughs> I have never been more conflicted about whether or not to open a package in my life. <laughs> Nobody told me what Pandora's box was made of, you know? Might be stamps and cardboard, I don't know. And I bring it in, the box is huge. There's a yoga mat in there. I set it on my table, and there's a little voice in the back of my head that says, Corey, you should probably check this to make sure it's not a bomb. Which is funny, you guys, because I'm very stupid. 
me checking something to make sure it's not a bomb is just me shaking it till it does or does not explode. <laughs> Two minutes in, I'm like, not a bomb, we're good. I open up the box, I look in, and it's got the yoga mat, and it's got these DVDs, and I'm like, holy shit. These guys want me to work out. <laughs> that is insanity. <laughs> Should've got the workout program Sanity. It's just cheeseburgers and porn, but I get through that quickly. <laughs> Not too quickly, ladies. <laughs> yeah, thank you. You're welcome. All right. <laughs> One creepy guy in the corner is like, I feel that. Mm. <laughs> negative, negative, sir. And I am, I am pretty cheap. I'm from Hibbing, Minnesota, so I grew up real broke. So like, I already realized that I ordered this thing, right? So I'm like, damn it, I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna get my money's worth out of this shitty thing I did to myself. <laughs> and so I get it out, and the company, for those of you that don't know, like the company of insanity, like everything is like all like happy. And like, these guys are more happy doing jumping jacks than any blowjob any man has ever received. <laughs> like, oh, this is the best, I love it! Like, I hate these people. And I get the yoga mat out. The whole company's called Beach Body. Get your Beach Body, yeah! And like, it's so intense. Yeah, you guys are nodding yes. You've seen it, right? Yeah. And it's so bad that like the yoga mat, they can't even call it a yoga mat. They call it a Beach Body Jump Pad. They should have called it a fat alcoholic tear sponge, because that's what it did. Seven sit-ups in, super absorbent. My roommate comes home, are you crying? No, I'm working out, please leave. <laughs> so I finally get ready to do it, right? I put the DVD in, I'm like, let's do this. And for anybody that's done it, do you remember the first thing on those DVDs? I'm gonna say it and you're gonna go, oh yeah. The first thing on these DVDs is like a page and a half of fucking warnings. <laughs> right, oh yeah, all three of them, oh yeah. And like the shitty, it's like a page and a half, right? But these are the kind of warnings you should never have to say out loud to another adult. The first warning says, and I quote, these exercises are strenuous. <laughs> that's exercise! You never got done working out and like, well, that's a brisk nap. I should do something with my day. <laughs> no, maybe yoga, but not jumping jacks. Calm down. And then the next one is the one that just really got my goat. It goes, please consult a physician to make sure you're okay for physical activity. <laughs> that is never going to fucking happen, you guys. <laughs> never gonna walk into a doctor's office and be like, hey, you think I'm too fat to work out? <laughs> you guys get the joke over here? <laughs> over here, you get it? You guys think I'm too fat to work out? Can I eat these vegetables or will my system reject them? <laughs> Do you have any painkillers? Cause that's what this is about. And you do a, uh, a cooking show. Yep, cooking it with Corey. As a stand-up comic, I've kind of always been on the poverty line. So my cooking style directly resembles that of my immigrant grandparents. Just the cool thing about that show for me is like, I've never claimed to be good at this. I just, I'm from Hibbing and there's a lot of weird right. dishes that are from there. Pasties. Yeah. Pa is that what they're called? Yeah, pasties. Yeah, meat filled. <laughs> Meat Donuts. pockets. Michigan meat pockets. Michigan. Michigan meat pockets. It's a meat. It's meat in a ball of donut. Yeah, it's like. It's like. No, it's, it's like a pastry. Donut. It's not like cake. Donuts a pastry. Is it? Shit. I don't know. Well, then it's a meat pastry. You're the one guess. with the cooking show. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Corey Adam. I'm here all night. Seriously, I need a place to stay. Do it. Right. <laughs> That's right. I drink because I grew up right outside Detroit, Michigan. Uh, you have to, to deal with it. Uh, grew up outside Detroit, went to Catholic school. That's why I don't believe in God anymore. Uh, <laughs> while I was in Catholic school, I was on what's called the football team. Yeah, this. Football team. <laughs> My junior year, every day after practice, we would lift us some goddamn weights. While we would lift those weights, we would listen to the soundtrack to a little movie called Top Ethan Gun. 
You're right, that is super badass. <laughs> Until Take My Breath Away comes on. <laughs> and it's all about not looking anyone in the eye. That's all that is. Just, ah, ha, 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 ha. Yeah, I don't wanna play anymore, it's done. How did your eyes get so blue? <laughs> hey, this has been a great night so far. Are you ready for your headliner? Are you ready for your headliner, folks? Put your hands together. You've seen him on Marin on the IFC Network. Ladies and gentlemen, the very funny Ryan Singer, everyone. Everybody. 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 Oh, it's a TV taping. Get out the gold spray paint for the picture frame. <laughs> Woo, I'm like delirious right now. I got so, man, uh, so much Red Bull inside my body. <laughs> so much. Shouldn't drink it, shouldn't drink that stuff. Monster Energy drink, Red Bull. If, if I misspeak, if I say some words incorrectly, it's not because I'm dumb. I mean, I'm not real smart, but it's because I drink so much of this stuff. It's got taurine in it, right? Uh, taurine is synthetic bull testosterone. I want the real stuff, but they won't let me have it, right? So we got the scientists to synthesize fake bull ball juice so you can chug it down your stupid face just to feel alive. You know what I mean? It's like a steroid. Steroids make your muscles bigger. That's if you work out. Uh, this is me working out. I look like a chimpanzee doing the Macarena, right? So I've only got one, bo uh, one muscle in inside my entire body that I use, and I'm not even sure it's a muscle, to be quite honest with you. And that's my tongue. It's because I just don't shut the hell up. I'm just always talking. So it's like I'm chugging all this Red Bull, all these steroids into my body, and I'm just, it's like my mouth is inside, or, or my tongue's inside my mouth getting all jacked up like it's on CrossFit, which is my new, he was talking about insanity, but I, I love CrossFit's my new favorite exercise fad, dude. Like, five years ago, if I saw a dude running down the street carrying a TV, I'd be like, that dude stole that TV. <laughs> but now I'm like, oh, I bet that dude's doing CrossFit. Look at him. <laughs> like, if I'm driving my car through a neighborhood and somebody's got a kettlebell, like, jogging, I just want to yell out my window every time, she's never gonna love you! <laughs> she's not coming home! It doesn't matter how many abs you have! <laughs> The older I get, the more I realize I should always be yelling into a mirror. But uh, it's okay. It's, it's okay. Some jokes end sad, and that's okay. I'm here with Ryan Singer, and uh, stand-up comedian extraordinaire, and uh, welcome. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. How'd you get here? Where are you from? Oh, I'm, I live in Los Angeles now, originally from Dayton, Ohio. The former home of uh, Oliver and Wilbur Wright. Yeah. The inventors of flight. But I thought, they, I thought that was Kitty Hawk. No. I mean, we don't need to get into the Ohio versus North Carolina yeah. discussion. Okay. That war is being waged on license plates okay. currently. Yeah. Ohio, Dayton, Ohio was where they were born and they had their bicycle shop and where they invented the airplane. Is that okay? They just didn't have the proper hill to fly it off okay. in Dayton. So that's why they took the plane down <laughs> to Kitty Hawk. Yeah. So basically, that's like saying, uh, mm. You know, let's say I invented like the coolest time travel machine, yeah. but I didn't have the right temperature yeah. uh, in where I live to do it, so I yeah. brought it over to your house. And then you start uh, just putting banners <laughs> on your house, the birthplace of time travel. It's like, no, no. See, it, Ohio license plates say birthplace of aviation because they were born there. Yeah. North Carolina says first in flight. First in flight, yeah. It's like, you know, the people in North Carolina are a bunch of idiots. It is good to be alive, though. God. Technology in general, carpet. Sometimes I just get baffled looking at carpet, dude. It's like indoor grass, you know? Ah. Sometimes inventions get creepy to me too. Like, I got creeped out the other day thinking about leather. Who the first person who ever wore leather was? You know, it was probably a man, you know? Allegedly, it happened over 100,000 years ago. That's when it first happened. It's probably a man standing in a field like, Oh, look at that peaceful, sentient being. Just chewing grass, minding its own business. I'm going to sneak up behind it. <laughs> and then I'm going to kill it. Because <laughs> I can. And then I'm going to peel all of its skin off of its body so I can wear it like it's my own. 
You do that to a cow, it's fashion. You want to do it to another person, you're a psychopath. What's the real difference, dude? You like these pants? These are Theodore from accounting. He was a real heifer, that one. You have a podcast. Yeah, I sure do. It's called Me and Paranormal You. I call it a mind cast because I'm That's a right. weird, I try to differentiate it. Yeah. I think, as far as I know, it's the only mind cast out there. Many people have a podcast. That's right. I'm not sure how many people have a mind cast. I interview people with paranormal abilities or experiences, so it's pretty fun. Kind of like a coast to coast thing, maybe. Oh, a I love bit. coast to coast. Yeah. Coast to coast, uh, big big influence on me because when I first started doing stand up comedy on the road from Ohio, and many late nights driving in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Always find coast to coast. That was the one radio program you could usually find. Yeah. At two in the morning when you're driving through the hills. I wonder of West why. Virginia. Maybe they must have had a lot of fans that would just bounce it off different things. And oh yeah, yeah. I mean pretty much every Fox AM news station. Yeah. AM radio station carried it. Yeah. So it was syndicated. It was one of the few huge syndicated programs. Yeah. So yeah, loved it, man. Loved driving through the mountains at two in the morning listening to like out of body experiences and yeah. you know, alien encounters and all this other Atlantis. <laughs> Most of the time though inventions are cool to me. Like I was in the hotel today just kinda like <sighs> Not because I use it, but I was holding the blow dryer, just kind of like baffled by the device. Like, I don't know if you've ever just been baffled by a device. Like, what the, who did this, how, did this, how does this sort of, you know, like. Sometime in the past, somebody said, I want to harness the power of the wind in my fist. <laughs> but slightly warmer, you know? <laughs> and they invented the blow dryer. Well done, person. <laughs> It's got electricity in it, like, oh, that's magic, dude. Electricity's just invisible shit, like, oh, I'll never, I'll never understand it. Like, television, how that works, oh, don't fucking try to explain it to me. Uh, there's two things in this life I will never understand, how television works and craps. I lose so much money playing craps. I just can't figure out, I know the casino's close by, and I'm gonna go later tonight and just lose everything. I can't wait, but, uh... <laughs> I was raised in an Irish Catholic gambling family, so it's like I've been gambling since I came out of the womb. I think I probably was a, a bet, actually. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I was a winner or a loser, but I think my mom's still holding on to that ticket. It'll pay off one of these days. Just show, kid, just show. What? You don't even have the place. That's okay. I do, I've been gambling my whole life. Oh man, I love it too. My family, they gamble on everything. Cards, poker, horseshoes, darts, all that kind of stuff. Cornhole. That's a backyard game, not a... I remember one Christmas I lost, it was close to $200 at the poker table. And most of it to my grandma. And that's a lot of money to lose, right? So I was upset about it. And, uh, and... My grandma knows how I was upset. She goes, well, you shouldn't be gambling with money. You can't afford to lose. I was like, I'm 11 years old, Grandma. <laughs> My gift this year was just a card with a $50 bill that said, see you at the table. This is some bullshit. <laughs> like, you're setting me up for this. I was set up. Of all the things paranormal, why are comedians into Bigfoot? I think comedians are into Bigfoot because there's mystery there. And there's also, there's danger, there's mystery, uh, and we also have more time during our days <laughs> to be on YouTube. Is it because of uh, the long drives and that's- <laughs> The long drives and you're you can be see, in the rural, you see rural all areas. of the unexplored area. Yeah. And you're like, oh yeah, easily. Yeah. There could be things living in here that we haven't found. And there's also something very high stakes about it. Comedians devote their life to the slimmest possibility that they'll make it. Yeah, it's so rare that we can make it right. So being a successful comedian is almost like being Bigfoot <laughs> You just hope people find you. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen. That was Ryan Singer. Bigfoot is real <laughs> mm. God, My family's pretty cool. I got cool parents. Uh, my parents got divorced when I was about 16 years old um, And they remained single for about five six years before they got remarried. So I turned 21 years old and both my parents were single, which meant I got to go out drinking with my single parents, which on, which on paper might sound cool, you know, like being out with your dad, trying to meet your new mom together. But, uh, 
But it led to some like weird fights at the bar. My dad would be like, hey, look at her. She should be your new mom. I was like, no, oh, no, that should be your new daughter. He'd be like, no, she should be your new mom. And I was like, dude, if you end up marrying her, I'm just gonna have to move in the house and act like I sleepwalk every time she showers. That's gonna be weird. <laughs> but leave her, to, leave her to me in your will, if you don't mind. Uh, women are not property. Uh, it's a socially conscious joke. Uh, even worse, though, being out with my mom. My mom is beautiful. She's gorgeous, right? Cinematically beautiful, too, like Greta Garbo. Uh, and here's the thing. Dirty old men, they don't have a filter over the, over the shit that comes out of their mouth. They will say anything to anybody. It doesn't matter who you are or where you are. Uh, one night, uh, m my mom and I were out, and she wanders off at this bar, and this old dude walks over to me. He's like, hey, excuse me, son. Is that your mother over there? I was like, yes, sir, that is. And he goes, wow, she's one fine piece of ass, isn't she, boy? And I was like, what the? I was like, yeah, and she's got crabs, dickhead. <laughs> Moving along, sir. Take your $50 bills and your pocket full of blue pills and hit the road, Jack. <laughs> Why do old dudes always got 50s? I don't know. My dad's a pretty cool dude. My dad is a common pleas court judge in the state of Ohio where I grew up. Uh, Ohio has capital punishment, which means that if someone's found guilty of murder in his courtroom, uh, he can sentence them to death, right? And, uh, which is a crazy power for a person to have, especially when they're in charge of your curfew uh, and discipline. <laughs> you better be home by 11. Yes, sir, I will. <laughs> My dad is a uh, Republican, which is fine. He's a Christian, which is fine. I don't have a problem with either one of those things. But what that combination means is he's against abortion but for capital punishment, right? And my simple brain locks up <laughs> when I try to figure out that combo. Like, like to me, that's like saying um, I'm against, you know, totally against the consumption of cookie dough, but I believe it's perfectly okay to eat cookies. <laughs> you know? You'd have all the same political arguments, too, you know what I mean? You'd have, you'd have the liberal left, you know, like, oh, everybody knows cookie dough's not a cookie until it pops out of the oven. <laughs> Unless you can stick a fork in and out of a cookie cleanly. It's not a cookie, right? It's not a cookie. <laughs> you'd have the middle of the road. We believe in partially cooked consumption. Because uh, our chefs have proven that after four minutes in the oven, cookie dough gets a brown bottom. And the signifying trait of a cookie is a brown bottom. <laughs> You'd have the conservative right. Did you know that at its inception, cookie dough has completely formed chocolate chips? <laughs> Listen, as a man, I don't believe I'm entitled to an opinion on this matter. Because uh, I know the kitchen is a woman's place. And uh, <laughs> that's the kitchen, okay. <laughs> Don't let the metaphor break down at the end. This is, this is where babies get cooked, in the kitchen. Okay.